Hey, do you remember when first person shooters were stupid fun, even unintentionally so? Well I do because I grew up in the 80s and 90s and it was a great time to play first person shooters because nobody took them too seriously most of the time, unless we were talking about that violence debate that was just really, really dumb and totally wrong. But hey, I'm Fox with Foxo Games, let's talk about Shadow Warrior 2 for the PC. Well, Shadow Warrior 2 does get many things right and being stupid fun most of the time. But on the other hand, it doesn't always harken back just to the old days of first-person shooters because it is a fairly complicated game in some ways, although unnecessarily so, and you don't really need to worry about a lot of that complication. Shadow Warrior was a remake of the original game called Shadow Warrior First-Person Shooter back from the early 90s, where it just tried to be silly and fun and have a sense of humor about itself. Now, Shadow Warrior 2 is a follow-up to Shadow Warrior, and in many ways, it improves on the basic formula of Shadow Warrior adding a whole lot to the game. That doesn't always work out in its favor, but it's not an entirely negative thing. Let's talk about Shadow Warrior 2 from the PC port perspective. As always, I'm a PC gamer at heart, and although you'll be able to watch this for review of the console games in many ways, this is really a focus on the PC version. And I have to say that Shadow Warrior 2 is one of the best PC ports in recent memory. I mean, it has amazing performance, even at ultra settings on my GTX 1080 8GB graphics card, and yes, it is arguably a very powerful graphics card. Check the video description for my full system specs. And there are tons of options here in Shadow Warrior 2. I mean, a lot. You can pick which monitor it shows on, which is really nice for those of us with multi-monitor setups. I have dual monitors, both on my gaming machine and my video editing machine, but don't worry guys, my video editing machine is not some massive beast, it's just sort of the hand-me-down parts that get replaced from my gaming machine, so I'm not rich, I just happen to reuse parts. Uh, you can pick your monitor, as I just said, your refresh rate, aspect ratio, resolutions up to 4K, although I wasn't able to test that, true HDR display setting, which again, I couldn't test because I don't have a true HDR display, unfortunately. I would love to get one, but right now they're really expensive and really limited. When they're more available, I'll pick one up. Full screen windowed or borderless windowed mode. I always play in borderless windowed mode whenever it actually works properly. And here it does, thank goodness. V-Sync with triple buffering, resolution scaling, which is nice. Texture quality, anisotropic filtering, shadows, volumetric fog, temporal AA, which of course is the only option here, unfortunately. Lens flare, motion blur, depth of field, chromatic aberration, which I turn off because I don't like. Film grain, bloom, SSAO. Particles, screen space reflections, all and the list goes on, guys. There's so much to choose from here. It's really, really nice. Also of note, of course, as I mentioned, is that true HDR support. One of the few games right now that really, really does support an actual full HDR display, high dynamic. Um, shoot, what does that mean? I forgot. It doesn't matter, guys. You can look it up. Also of note is the new NVIDIA Multi-Res Shading Technology. This is, however, to save on performance. It will dynamically render the edges of the screen at a lower resolution, since most people rarely look at the screen edges while they're playing. You generally look in the center of the screen. So do not enable this if you're not having any performance issues, because it is not something you want to add to the game if you don't need it. It's for performance purposes. So don't think, oh, Multi-Res Shading, nice. I'm going to turn on multi-res shading and the game will look better. Uh, the game will actually look slightly worse and that the edges will be lower resolution. So again, don't enable that if you're not having problems with uh, performance issues. But if you're, you know, if you've got an older card or if you're trying to push out the maximum performance that you just can't handle, turn that on and see if that helps you. You can use mouse and keyboard or a gamepad. Both work great and it has fully rebindable mouse and keyboard keys. A really nice feature is that the gamepad had a left-handed mode as well as aim assist, sensitivity settings, and of course the option to invert mouse and analog controls is available for those nuts out there who for some reason like operating backwards. Really guys, there are just so many settings here and this game can be finely tweaked to your preferences and performance capabilities. To my recollection, from start to finish, I have not experienced a single crash or any glitches. I, I kind of feel like there has to have been at least one of them, but honestly, I can't think of one off the top of my head. It's worked perfectly as far as I can remember. Performance is stellar, as mentioned. I can maintain well above 100 frames per second at nearly all times, and I generally see my frame rate come 
close to 144 except towards the end of the game where it hovered around 100 110 to 120. see the video description again from my full system specs so you know what i'm running but even if you don't have a powerful graphics card like i do you should have little problem running the game there are lots of options to tweak down to get better performance including the aforementioned multi-res shading technology although i do believe it's only available on nvidia graphics cards correct me if i'm wrong some of the textures are fairly simple and not everything in the game is as detailed as it could be. I do have some complaints and that is there is a lot, a lot of debris, foliage, and objects that can obscure your view of items and other important details. Even some enemies are partially obscured by the clutter of all the objects in the game world. Uh, many of the textures and effects make some areas of the game look excessively bright and shiny and reflective. It's difficult to see what's what. I think it's actually easier on your eyes if you have a true HDR display. I don't. It's hard to see or figure out what's going on sometimes, particularly during combat. While the graphics are fairly good overall, as I mentioned, they do feel excessively noisy and overly complex. That's the biggest complaint I can think of with it. Other than that, as long as you don't run up and stare at everything up close, it should look pretty good and perform fairly well. Weapon combat and particle effects all look really, really good, and it's nice that you can actually slice stuff up even after you've destroyed the enemy. On to the sound and music. Well, the sound effects in general are pretty good, although some come through a bit quiet. The voice work is good overall and sometimes great, although occasionally it's mediocre depending on the voice actor. It is never terrible, and that really, to me, is the standard of good voice work in a game. I know that's kind of the standard we've come to expect from video games. As long as the voice work isn't bad it's good <laughs> what can i say music is solid and the occasional use of real world songs is not bad it actually fits here because this is a corny cheesy game so just throw in some cheesy 80s song and it works by golly it works sound engineering needs more work unfortunately as i mentioned some of the sounds come through too quiet or drowned out by other louder sounds and this includes some of the voice work where some of the dialogue as i'll mention later will come through while you're playing the game so a lot of these sound effects may drown out the voices at the default audio settings you can change those the story is intentionally ham-fisted and forced and I don't mind because you know what it works for this this is always what Shadow Warrior has been about a kind of silly over-the-top humorous approach to the first-person shooter genre one that kind of blends together different Asian cultures in a way that doesn't really make sense but hey I guess it works you know we'll take a little bit of China here we'll take a little bit of Japan over here we'll just throw it all together and it'll just be generic Asian culture right I mean the main character is clearly meant to be Japanese because of the way you know he's got a katana Japanese weapons drives a car with a Japanese license plate and yet his last name is Wang which is clearly meant to be a reference to a Chinese last name but also a reference to the male genitalia for humor reasons it never takes itself too seriously until the very very end but at that point I mean it makes sense it's the end of the game you know everyone's parting ways so that sort of fits the interplay between Kamiko the the uh, well I don't even know what to call her she's sort of the the secondary character in the game Wang's the primary character and Kamiko sort of becomes attached to him through a reason that I can't get into for spoiler reasons but you know it never gets too deep and that's to be expected the game mainly f hovers on the surface when it comes to story okay where's the stuff we need oh I don't keep any of that here first place they'd look what are you talking about we spent all this time breaking in here I got blood all over my shirt why would we I really wanted a cup of tea you wanted it I like tea okay wait you have tea here where the hell did you get tea Zilla knows a guy. It's one of the perks. Can you put the kettle on? Look, I don't think we have time for that. Where are your notes? If I tell you, will you make me a cup of tea? No! I'm tired of this shit. I'm not your personal valet. Now where are your stupid notes? I gave them to Zing for safekeeping. The story rarely takes the spotlight, but when it does, you can actually skip it by holding a button. Now, some conversations, as I mentioned, do happen during gameplay, so they can be easy to miss or get drowned out by what's going on, especially if you're in the middle of combat. But overall, I think, you know, the story fits. It makes sense. It's not bad. It's nothing special. But, you know, it's better than what you would need to push a first-person shooter game out like this. So, props to them for putting in more effort than was needed.
On to the gameplay. Well, Shadow Warrior 2 adds greatly to the gameplay you got in Shadow Warrior. You've got all your standard first-person stuff with the awesome, awesome melee, you know, katana, sword combat of Shadow Warrior, but it's expanded upon. You can now move more freely, including double jumping, dashing, air dashing, and the ability to grab ledges and climb up. You know, it took me a long time, but I finally figured out that you can actually run in the game. Instead of holding shift like you do in most games, you double tap W to move forward. I don't know what it is on the gamepad, because I only tested out gamepad controls for just a little bit. You don't take fall damage, thank goodness, so you can feel free to run around and jump anywhere. Although, if you make a, quote, fatal fall, like if you jump off a ledge where where, you know just sort of goes off into nowhere it'll just put you back at one point in the area accompanying the standard first person combat as i mentioned are awesome melee weapons guys these work so well in the game you'll want to use them almost exclusively at times in fact i think they put in so much effort to make the melee weapons good that the actual firearms in the game sometimes feel like they take a back seat although there are a ton there are so many weapons and so many ways to upgrade uh, your character in this game it is insane at times you may find it difficult to figure out what is really best for you and your play style uh, there's tons of ammo so you rarely run out of that and you can upgrade your character in a ton of different ways as i mentioned so that's cool you can upgrade special powers and abilities where you go into like a, a hidden mode where you're invisible to enemies or you go into like kind of a crazy rush mode where you do more damage you have a healing ability and that's the one i use most of the time you can upgrade your special melee attacks you know there are special attacks where for example you can do vortex where if you hit a or the d button that's your left or right movement buttons on the keyboard and then hold the right mouse button you'll do this sort of 360 degree attack with your katana really cool uh, you can upgrade your ammo capacity simple stuff like that and the list goes on there is really so much to upgrade here you may actually find it a bit confusing and we'll get to that so what's my verdict on shadow warrior 2 well as i just mentioned it's a more polished version of shadow warrior with a lot more going for it but I do feel like there's just too much here sometimes, and there's a lot of unnecessary fluff added in, especially all the upgrade options. That would have been uh, better served if they reduced them down to a smaller number that's more manageable. It has a bigger game world and offers a semi-open world elements at times where you can choose to do side missions or choose not to do them. And I love, I love the smoother, more continuous movement here. It feels liberating because you can just zip around, move fast, climb up, jump down, you know, dash in the air. Uh, double jump, grab ledges, all this stuff that you could not do in the original Shadow Warrior. Or, well, the original remake of Shadow Warrior is what I'm referring to. I like the teleportation aspect and having a hub world because it does allow for the optional side missions in a less linear structure. You can choose what order you do the missions. And of course, of course, there are some essential story missions that have to be done in a specific order and they become available in that order combat is pretty spot on although in the mess of effects and explosions it can be hard to tell what's going on and if you're actually hitting something or not but i found there to be so many weapons and upgrades for weapons that it got confusing as i mentioned this is one of the biggest complaints i mean it got to the point where i just didn't know what to put with what i'm like i could slot this thing in this this gym and this thing will make this do 11% more fire damage, or this one will do 12% more lightning damage. And this one will make the reload time faster on the weapon, but it'll make me move slower. But this one will make me move faster, but it'll reduce the damage to small enemies. And this thing increases damage to large enemies and speeds up reload time, but decreases... I don't know, there's so much stuff going on here. It is so hard to keep track of. I kind of gave up halfway through the game and was like, just screw it. I'll just slot whatever into whatever weapon, pick whatever upgrade options I think might work, and just roll with it. And as for those upgrades, too many of them just deal with these small percentage gains. Like, oh, you know, this one will give you a point, not point, sorry, five point some percent, you know, HP return. And this one will give you, you know, plus seven point some percent. You know, I'm just like, you know what? None of that really made a big difference to me, and so like I said, I just sort of picked whatever and ran with it. Now with some of the weapons, I felt like I ran low on ammo way too quickly, while with other weapons, I felt like the game gave me a nearly unlimited supply. Overall, I wasn't running out of ammo a lot, unless I focused on using one weapon above all others. When it came to the loot in this game, it really does go with a Borderlands style. You can pick up so many different weapons and upgrade thingies, and... 
uh, items and ammo and all this stuff and money's hidden over here and there's chests there and there's chests here to get to and there was just so much stuff to pick up that I started skipping it. Like I kind of got bored of picking up so much stuff. There's too much loot in the game. Sometimes I feel like they really need to just condense it down into what what's important, especially with the upgrade options. But I have to say that overall, it was a fun first-person shooter experience with a sense of humor that didn't always hit the mark, but I appreciated the effort. I enjoyed it a lot, even though it could get repetitive at times, as first-person shooters tend to do. But I generally did not feel the need to make use of all the special powers and abilities and upgrades that they gave me. I, I just skipped most of that stuff. I occasionally used healing, but other than that, I really didn't use any of those special abilities and whatnot that they had in the game. I did make use of course the special moves for the katana because like I said melee in this game is awesome. Do not play this game and skip using the melee weapons. The melee weapons are really where it's at. They're really awesome, really fun, and I'd recommend this game for fans of first-person shooters, but particularly those who want a first-person shooter that knows how to do good melee combat. Hey, but as always, what did you think of Shadow Warrior 2? I'd love to know. I do actually read all the comments to the best of my ability. Leave your comments below. Give the video a like and thumbs up and all that other jazz if you feel like you need to. You can subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Fox with Foxy Games, and I will see you guys next time. It's a fine line between brilliant and cowardly. Hey, a win is a win. He was trying to kill me. Do you ever wonder about the fact that you're the hero of all the stories?